Meta AI's Segment Anything 3 was released last month, and last week we were pretty busy checking out some new AI models. Now we finally got some time to talk about SAM 3. SAM 3 is a pretty cool update this time. Not only does it handle image and video segmentation, but it also includes 3D features. Meta AI actually released three separate segmentation models for general image video segment, body 3D, and object 3D. So you can check out their official page. With SAM 3, you can create cutouts from videos or images, or even generate 3D scenes from a single image. You can also create 3D objects or a character's body just by importing an image. Anyway, today we're going to check out the most common use of SAM 3, what we usually do for image and video. First, you'll need to register and fill out a form for approval on Facebook's SAM 3 Hugging Face repo. Once you have that, you can download it using Hugging Face, either with your Hugging Face API key or by manually downloading the files. I like to use this ComfyUI custom node because it gives you two ways to download the SAM 3 models. Option 1. Auto download using the custom node. Option 2. Manually download the SAM 3 files yourself and put them into the subfolder. Either way, you'll place the files in the same path, the models slash SAM 3 subfolder. Anyway, let's check out how to use this node. It's pretty easy. As you can see in this demo screenshot of the workflow, you enter a prompt for the kind of objects you want to track in a video, and you get object IDs so you can selectively track specific objects. So let's jump into Comfy UI. Just delete the default layout and type SAM3 in the keyword search bar. Once you've installed the custom node, it'll show up. This node's input parameters include an image. You can input a single image or even a batch of images, which means you can use video frames as input. If you're using it for videos, just enable the Use Video Model option and SAM3 will run across all the video frames. For example, here I've got a video clip of multiple people at a party. I've turned on the Use Video Model option and for object IDs, you'll see a little tooltip pop up where it tells you can enter IDs like 1, 3, and 5 from the video. Those will be the ones that get segmented. Let's say in the prompt, we type a keyword like human. Then only the objects with IDs 1, 3, and 5 that match human will be segmented. To keep it simple, let's just select object ID 1 here. As you can see, this guy is highlighted in green. That's object ID 1 from the reference video. And this works with multiple objects too. If you don't want to use any object IDs, just leave that box empty and click Run again. You'll get all the objects that match your prompt, like person or human. Whatever you want to segment, it'll select all of them in your video. As you can see in the result, each segmented object shows up in a different color, and there's a label on top showing the unique ID number for each object, like ID 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, etc. That makes it easier to tell which object is which when you connect the segmented image. Now let's say we're going to use this SAM3 segmentation in a workflow. This time, I'll take just one frame from the video to identify which object IDs we want to use. Because different video clips will have different numbers of objects, and the IDs will vary. All the people are highlighted in different colors. When we enable Use Video Model, those color highlights also include the ID numbers. That way, you can track which ID belongs to which person as an object throughout your video. I'll set this single frame as the preview. It's more user-friendly for how we'll apply it in a workflow. So once we identify, say, numbers 3 and 4, or maybe 2 and 4, as the people we want to segment, then in a workflow where we're generating a video, we can use those IDs, 2 and 4, and mask just those two people for video segmentation. This is useful for masking and video editing. For example, you could use it with WAN 2.2 Animate, WAN 2.1 Vase, or whatever video framework you're using for mask-based editing. Here's the generated result. As you can see, numbers 2 and 4, the two women in the middle, have masks that are pretty accurate, even down to small details like the shape and edges of their clothing. 
we can export those outputs as masks. If we use mask to image to preview, you'll see each object's mask separated individually, and each frame of the video is handled separately too. That gives you more precision for individual objects in the video mask output. If you use mask combine, it'll merge the two objects into one mask per frame. So you can use this in typical workflows, like how you'd use WAN 2.2 Animate or WAN 2.1 Vase for mask-based video editing tasks. Now let's bring this feature into some of our existing masking workflows. One typical way to use SAM3 is for virtual try-ons. This is the most common and easiest example for most people to understand. You segment the character's clothing from your reference image, and then you have another reference image of a garment. You can mask those regions for virtual try-ons. Here, I'm using the Quen Image Edit, trying out another approach. We've used the Quen Edit Try-On LoRa models before, I introduced those earlier, and I'm using them again here with two input reference images. Here's a trick. I take the first image, the character image, and put it into the SAM3 group, where I get the segmentation mask and bounding box showing the exact location of the mask regions. I convert that into a bounding box, and now I have the mask regions ready to inject into our latent noise. Through the latent noise mask and VAE encode, the first reference image gets that masked region for virtual try-on, whether it's changing clothing, outfits, or even hair color, if you prefer. If you're doing hair instead of clothing, your second reference image would show the hair color or hairstyle you want to apply. The text prompts are pretty simple. All you need is the character from image 1 and a try-on using the clothing or hair from image 2 while keeping the same pose. That makes it more practical to use with some of the recently launched AI models for image generation. Let's try it out. Say I have this image I previously generated using Quen image. It's styled for fashion, and I want to change the whole outfit. But with older virtual try-on frameworks and AI models, masking something like this jacket can be tricky. It's a long jacket with a complex shape, and you'd need a really accurate mask to use those older LoRa models or in-context models in flux. So I'm going to pair it with something from Pinterest, because as we all know, Pinterest is great for women's fashion. I picked this Korean style outfit that fits well with our reference image. Now we've got both images ready. You can imagine transferring this outfit, the shirt, the dress, to the character in my first reference image. I'll enable this setting so we can generate the image. But first, remember, we need to specify what we want to segment in the image. SAM3 is pretty smart here. I just used a general keyword like clothing, similar to how segmentation anything one used prompt and Dino models for prompt filtering. Let's bypass the case sampler for now and go step by step. First, we'll run SAM3 and see what we get in the output image preview. Now we've got the mask segmentation for the items in this image. We've identified three objects we want to mask in this scene. With older AI models, Using segmentation like this and applying a try-on, like I just mentioned, can be kind of difficult. You'd have to carefully preserve these regions to get the shape right. It's not the same as what we want to change. The new clothing is a totally different shape. As you can see, the first image has a long jacket, and our try-on image has another shape entirely. That's really hard to do with previous virtual try-on frameworks or basic mask masking methods. But now, thanks to SAM3, the masking is super accurate for exactly what we want to do. Right now, I've converted those masks just to make them easier to view, and I've turned the mask into a bounding box. So now we have these regions that are masked, and these are the exact areas where we're going to put the new clothing on the character. Let's go ahead and run through the case sampler to see what we get in the generated image. So here, as you can see, our character's outfit has been changed to match what we had in reference image 2. Specifically, the outfit looks pretty good. And notice it didn't include the handbag. Quen Image Edit was smart enough to just replace the clothing, exactly as mentioned in the text prompt. So you can pretty much use any kind of clothing shape, even if it doesn't match the original character's outfit at all, and it still works. Nowadays, using SAM3 with the bounding box method works way better than the old approach that relied on Flux Try-On LoRa for this kind of workflow. 
The next method I've set up uses Z Image Turbo. With Z Image Turbo, we're leveraging faster image generation, especially for upscaling. Here, we're just doing basic image upscaling, basically enlarging the image size. We don't want to add too many artifacts or extra details that would make it look different from the original image. So I'm using the real ESARGAN X4 upscaling model, which keeps changes to a minimum while still improving resolution. All right, so we've got our generated image and it's also been upscaled using Z Image Turbo. Z Image Turbo does a pretty good job with upscaling because it doesn't try to overdo it. It just bumps up the resolution while keeping the original details intact. So after upscaling, the image still looks pretty much the same, just sharper. The details are improved, but the overall look stays true to the Quen Edit generated image. Even the face looks a bit sharper, and the clothing colors are crisper too. That's all we really need for a light up scale. I've also tried a few other examples where I use totally different clothing styles and shapes. As you can see, this long jacket was always a big problem. Masking this region was almost impossible with older AI models, but now, with Quen Image Edit, or really any modern image editing AI, it's way easier, especially when you combine it with SAM3. The accuracy of how you can use those masked regions just keeps getting better and better for overall image generation. Now, let's move on to video. This next example uses WAN 2.2 Animate. Right now, segmentation is way easier. You just type the keyword person and it automatically segments that person. If you have multiple people, you can specify the object IDs here. I've added another SAM3 segmentation node that pulls just one single frame from the video. That makes it way easier to identify which object ID you want to use, especially if there are multiple people. If you don't have any specific object ID, just leave the box blank. That works perfectly for single person videos. Let's say we've already generated an image using Quen Image Edit. We can use that as our replacement image in WAN 2.2 Animate. For example, I've got this TikTok dance video. First, I'll disable the video pre-processing for pose and face in this group and run a quick preview so you can see what it'll look like, especially if you need to identify the object ID for your video segmentation. You'll see the IDs labeled on top. Okay, so after you run SAM3, you can just pause the operation, stop it right in the middle of sampling since you don't have any pose data yet. Back in SAM3, you'll see there's an ID 0 here. If you have multiple people, like in the earlier example where we had a group of friends partying, you'd identify which object you want to mask. This approach is super flexible thanks to SAM3. You can specify exactly which object IDs to use. So let's say I have multiple objects, but I only want to mask object ID 0. I'll just put 0 in the box. If I wanted more, like in the previous example, I'd put 1 and 3, and SAM3 would mask those three people or objects accordingly. Back to this case, I'll use object ID 0, and we're good to go. Once that's set, I can enable the group on the right side to process the pose, mask, and character face. Run it again, and it'll generate all the data needed. Video background face and pose for the character in the video. After masking this character and putting it into the generated video, the outfit and everything else has been applied using WAN 2.2 Animate. But the main point here is really about segmentation. Even with multiple people in the scene, just using the keyword person isn't enough for models like Dino Grounding that were used in earlier Segment Anything versions. But with SAM3, we can identify specific object IDs and only apply mask editing to the ones we choose. Now, Let's go back to the TikTok dance example. This one's even easier since there's only one person. Once you understand how the multi-person object ID system works, handling a single person video becomes super straightforward. When you've only got one person or one object, it's really easy. You can either leave the box empty or just put zero since that's the only index ID available. And that's it for this video. Pretty nice, pretty easy, just a simple way to use SAM3. I'll see you in the next one. See ya.